Hello and welcome to this week's Modern Toy Fair Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Loot Crate exclusive NECA Mirage Shadow Shredder. First we're going to take a look at the packaging. As you can see you've got that big open window so you can see the figure itself and some of the accessories. Uh, all that kind of black background to the packaging. I'm going to try to... Uh, move it here because the lettering and a lot of the design is in like a shiny silver so it's kind of hard to see as you can see there it's got the ninja turtles logo and then shredder written at the bottom got the nickelodeon logo down at the bottom as well on the side we do have a little picture of shredder in that same silver on the back we have some pictures of shredder the actual action figure in kind of like a comic strip form uh, the ninja turtle logo at the top again Ninja Turtle logo here on the side, Nickelodeon at the top again. Top of it also says Ninja Tur or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, with the top part of the window. And then on the bottom you just have the UPC and all the please don't choke on this toy warnings. All right, now we're going to take a look at the figure itself. Um, as you can see, Shredder is just kind of this deep, dark night sky blue, which really looks incredible. Um, throughout his tunic, all the different wrinkles have this like real dark black kind of detailing. And it's, it's very comic book-esque too, so it still feels like that Mirage Turtle uh, Shredder. Uh, down on his thighs, you'll even notice like he has some deep shading, and then on all the little wrinkles near his like knees and his pants have a little bit of uh, shading into it. The shin guards have it like down the sides. The kind of taping to his boots has it in between each little layer. Uh, the back of his tunic has a lot of it, kind of just to uh, make him blend in more because the the light would be on the front of him, so the back of him would be a little darker. His uh, wrist guards all have that same kind of shading where it would normally be shining. The bicep has some shading in the muscles. The shoulder pads both have shading on them. Uh, the mask itself really pops because they made sure to put a lot of it on there. So that way against the silver, it just kind of really stands out. And I, I definitely like the way that they uh, did this figure. It's definitely a lot different than what we're used to. Okay, so first thing I want to uh, mention before we get into the articulation is you're going to want to heat this guy up before you move him around. The joints are very tight, and first time around I was afraid he was going to break, so just take a blow dryer on low for a few minutes, and it should loosen him up enough that uh, you don't have to worry about having any accidents because uh, he is going to be kind of hard to replace. Um, we're going to start with his head, so it does get pretty much 360 degrees all the way around left, right, however you want to do it. Uh, he does have some tilt to both the left and the right. He has a decent amount of up and down. Uh, the best part is his neck does have an additional joint where it connects to the collarbone area, so you can kind of get it even further forward and back, which is really nice. Um, now let's take a look. His arms, they theoretically should go 360 degrees around, but the rubber shoulder pad is in the way, and if you don't want to have that uh, pop off, I would strongly suggest against uh, getting too crazy with your forward and back motion. Uh, however, if you go out to the side, he goes pretty far. I wouldn't say quite 90 degrees, but about as close as you could get with those shoulder pads in the way. He does have the bicep swivel. It uh, goes all the way around double jointed elbows however his rubber wrist guard does get in the way of that as well because there's a little piece that kind of gets him stuck between his uh, forearm and his bicep. Uh, the wrist joint kind of does go all the way forward and then all the way back and of course it does go 360 degrees around which is uh, always good and then for his torso it does spin all the way around um, he, his kind of lower tunic does get a little loose because it is rubbery, but it kind of just pops back into place, so it's not a big deal. Uh, legs, he does get a lot of outward, which is great because, I mean, Shredder is a ninja. Uh, he does have the upper thigh swivel. He does have double-jointed knees. He 
it has at the uh, shin a little bit of a twist. It is a little tight and kind of hard to get. Let me see if I can get it back in focus. There we go. It is a little tight, but once you get it, you can kind of maneuver it around. Uh, at the ankle, he does get a little bit forward and backwards, not a whole lot. He does have that nice toe uh, articulation, so you can kind of pose him in different fashion without having to worry about him falling over quite as easily. Overall, this is pretty much the same shredder that we got before, just with a kind of new coat of paint, and it, it's still an awesome figure. All right, last thing we're gonna take a look at is the accessories. First up is his interchangeable hands. These are a little bit disappointing because they're gripping hands, but they're a little too wide to grip any of his weapons. So you kind of have to maneuver them in between his thumb and his fingers to get them to stay in place, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, next we have his scythe on a chain. Uh, the chain itself is a plastic, which is nice because it's that dull gray to match the rest of the um, kind of comic book aesthetic versus having like a metal. The scythe does have some detailing in there with black paint for like little nicks and stuff and then across the blade and then it has this like kind of little plastic nub down at the bottom. The last accessory is kind of the best one so in the comics Shredder has a bow and arrow and they didn't include it in the New York Comic Con set but this time around we got it and it's got a little bit of detailing in it with some shadowing um, the arrow does have like the feathered detailing in the back. Let me see if I can get to focus for you to show you. Kind of real light in there, but you can see it. The bow drawstring is really thick and durable, but it is pretty tight, so you're not going to get any crazy poses with this thing. Um, but overall, I'm still really happy with it. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this week's Modern Toy Fair reviews. Out of the three figures we're getting from the Loot Crate boxes, I honestly feel like this one's going to be my favorite. The only thing that could really make it better is if NECA did a set of the Turtles in the red and black from the cover of the first issue to kind of contrast the uh, blue and black of Shredder. That would be really cool to see them do, but uh, only the future can tell. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Hit the little bell to get notifications when our videos go up. We have Modern Toy Fair news on Fridays and Modern Toy Fair reviews on Mondays. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a link in the description below for our t Public store. All sorts of stuff, t-shirts, mugs, phone cases, pillows, you name it. has our logo, has some of the Media Junkie logos on it, even some different designs I've worked up in Photoshop, so feel free to check that out. I greatly appreciate it. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Same toy time, same toy fair channel. Thank you so much.